one of the biggest benefits to using a GraphQL client is that they typically contain some mechanism for caching. Today, we'll look at how Apollo Client caches with data normalization. With GraphQL, we can define the shape of the response right inside of our query or mutation. These responses can often contain nested objects too. Here we have an example store. It has products and we click through to a product, we can add a product to the cart. If we head back to the homepage and we open our developer tools, when we refresh this page, we can see here in the client side that we make an API request to get our cart. We pass it an ID and we get the items and the subtotal for the current cart. If we head on over to the code, we can see that we're using Apollo client use query here and we pass in the query to get cart by ID. Then we pass this static cart ID. Then further in the header, we display the subtotal of that cart. This query happens on the client and Apollo does a great job of caching this. If we open the dev tools for Apollo client, we can see that we have an active query, get cart by ID. We can then see inside of here what the query string looks like and we're also using a fragment. Then we can see on the right, we have variables for our root ID for this query. We can now see inside of the tab for the cache that Apollo client has identified the different objects based on their type name and generated what we typically call a cache key. Cart is the type name and Apollo client is the ID for the cart that we passed. If we now head to a page for our product and we open the network tab and we scroll down and we click add to cart, this will execute a GraphQL mutation that adds this item to the cart. Now let's look at the payload where we pass the variable for our input payload. And we can see here that we pass that same Apollo client ID and then the ID for the product and any images, the name and the price. This then returns the updated data for our cart and the items within this. If we scroll up, we should now see that the total of our cart has been updated in the header. If we switch back to the Apollo client cache, we can now see that we have a root mutation added to our cache and now we have this new object, cart item, followed by the ID of that cart item. You'll notice as we inspect the cache further that the items here are referenced by their cache key. Instead of storing the actual data inside the object, Apollo client references these nested objects using this ref key. As we add more items to the cart, we can see here that this object in the cache has been updated. If we were updating this cart item anywhere else in our application, this would also update this individual reference. And if we also queried anywhere else for our cart item, then Apollo can pull it from the cache directly without making a round trip to the server. As we navigate around our application, you'll notice that in the network tab that there is no more requests made to our API to fetch the cart contents. This is because the Apollo cache already has this. And whenever we add more items to the cart, the cache will be updated with that new data that's returned from the API. Now we have multiple items in the cart and these cart items are referenced by the ID. This is Apollo cache normalization at work. It will take your nested data and normalize that so it can be used inside of other queries and they can reference that same object. So you're not having to pass around and manipulate many objects across multiple arrays in your application. This keeps the cache lean and something that you can update inside of your application code for things like optimistic UI. We'll cover that in another video.